All right, so in this lecture, we're going to be looking at the North American colonies of Spain, which we're going to refer to as New Spain, our learning target for this lecture. In this lecture, you're going to learn about the development, geography, and culture of New Spain, which is Spain's North American colonies, until about the year 1700. At the end of this lecture, you need to be able to locate the territory of New Spain on a map, describe its geographic features, explain Spain's goals for its colonies, and describe its economy, government, and society. Spain's exploration. Spanish exploration in North America began with Columbus in 1492. The Spanish explorers claimed lands in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico about a hundred years before many of the other European nations started to, so they were ahead of the curve with everybody else. Many of their explorers were called conquistadors. Conquistadors were explorers who were appointed by the king to lead military expeditions into the interior of North and South America. And their goals were to conquer that territory from the Native Americans that lived there, and get treasure, gold, spread Christianity, that kind of thing. New Spain ends up becoming a very large area. The Spanish gained control of all the area of Central America, the what we think of today as the southwestern United States, Florida, the Caribbean islands, and their control extended south into South America, and they controlled most of South America other than part of what we would think of today as Brazil. Spain's goals in colonization, they really had two goals. Their primary goal was an idea called mercantilism. And mercantilism is the belief that a country's power is based on its wealth or its economic strength. Spain, what they did was they tried to extract resources from their colony and send those resources back to Spain and accumulate wealth. They were really interested in things like precious metals like gold and silver. So it's a very one-way sort of relationship where they just take and take and take from the colonies and try and accumulate as much wealth as they can. Their secondary goal was religious conversion. What they wanted to do was convert the Native Americans, who were not Christians, to Catholics so that they followed the same religion. New Spain's economy was based in large part on accumulating precious metals like gold and silver. There were lots of mining operations. In addition, the Spanish set up plantations. Plantations were large-scale farms where crash crops were grown for export. The typical ones would be sugar, tobacco, or cattle ranches where they'd raise livestock. Both of these types of economic activities required large amounts of labor, and there weren't enough Spanish settlers to do this work, so they resorted to using slaves. At first, the Spanish tried using Native American slaves, but those slaves were unreliable. Many of them were dying because of exposure to diseases from the Europeans that they didn't have immunities to. Also, it was easy for them to escape because they were from the local area. This is going to force the Spanish to use African slaves. Africa had a history of taking slaves in tribal warfare, so the slaves were available. They're brought across the Atlantic. The African slaves are tougher, they're more resistant to the diseases because they've been exposed to a lot of the diseases the Europeans had. Also, it's nearly impossible for them to escape. They're taken out of their continent, shipped across the ocean, they have no family, they have no support, sometimes they don't speak the language. There's nowhere for them to go, they're trapped. So this is your first set of practice questions. I want you to answer these practice questions in your notes. They're just true-false questions, so you can number one to five. Read through each one. Mark it as true or false. So number one says the Spanish conquest of the Americas began with Columbus. Number two, mercantilism is the belief that a country's strength is determined by its wealth. Number three, religious conversion was the main goal of Spanish colonization. Number four, New Spain's economic focus was the fur trade. And number five, the Spanish relied solely on Native Americans as slaves. If you need to, pause the video, go back and look at your notes so you can make sure you have the right answers. 
New Spain society. New Spain had a very well-defined and rigid class system. At the top of this class system were people who were known as the peninsulares. These were people who were born in Spain. They held most of the power and the wealth. Underneath them were the Creoles. The Creoles were people who were of Spanish descent, but were born in North America. So the place of their birth makes a distinction in what social class they're going to be in. Below them are two groups, the Mestizos and the Mulattoes. The Mestizos were people who had a mixture of Spanish and Native American ancestry, and the Mulattoes were people who had a mixture of Spanish and African ancestry. And then at the very bottom of the food chain, were the Indians and the slaves. And I think it's easiest to think of this class system sort of as a pyramid, where you have the Peninsulares, who are a very small group at the top, and then the Creoles, the Mestizos and the Mulattoes, and the Indians and the slaves. All the wealth and power is concentrated up here. They're the ones getting rich. Most of the taxes are being paid by these groups right in here. And then the labor force is going to be these bottom two. They're the ones who are doing all the work. Now, in order for a small group like this to control all of these people, they're going to need a big, powerful government. All right? Otherwise, and these people will start to rebel against this small group of people. Spain also has religious policies in their colonies that encourage the natives to convert to Catholicism. They develop a mission system. The mission would be a settlement that's set up by priests where they try and convert the Native Americans to the Catholic faith. And often the missions were run as schools, farms, things like that. By converting the natives to their religion, it gave the Spanish another way to control the local population. So they could control them not just through their government or through force, but they could control them by their control of their religion. So the government in New Spain, as we said when we looked at the class system, this is a government that's going to need a lot of control. It's very centralized with the peninsulares. It's an autocracy. The people who are in control of the government have unlimited power. In order for this to be enforced, it's going to require a very large and expensive bureaucracy. Bureaucracy are all those people who work and are responsible for carrying out government policy. The tax collectors, the soldiers, things like that. So they're going to supervise for Spain's ruler. There is no self-government in New Spain. There's no voting, there's no democracy, there's no republics. The system is called the encomienda system. Where Spain's settlers, who are granted the land, they had a right to tax or force the local Native Americans to work for them. They can impose any kind of laws or any kind of rules that they want. Alright, so now on your notes, make a heading for practice number two. These are five more true-false questions. You can just number them and write true or false. You don't have to write out the statements if you don't want to. Number one, New Spain's society had a strict class system. Number two, a Creole was someone of both Spanish and African ancestry. Number three, the mission system was used to convert and control the native population. Number four, New Spain's government was decentralized with regions working together loosely as a confederacy. Number five, under the encomienda system, Spanish landowners could tax or force local populations to work. You need to pause your video. We're done at this point. 